attractive people are usually isolated and lonely. So if you're an attractive person, unfortunately, this is something that you're going to have to learn to accept because attractive people struggle with finding genuine relationships and they're also at higher risk of people attempting to sabotage them. And I'm going to break this down. Now, there was another content creator on here, and from what I gathered in her video, she's a therapist, and in her video, she talks about some of the things that her gorgeous clients struggle with, and she also has explanations, and I love it. Go watch it. In this video, I do want to dive deeper as to why attractive people are usually isolated and lonely. They're lonely because they're self-centered, shallow, and have a bad personality. They're not alone because they look good. Almost everyone wants to be close to pretty people, but sometimes their character gets in the way. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to see men don't approach women anymore. Let's begin. Men don't always reject you or ghost you just because they're not interested in you. And this is why I always say dating is not black and white. I was just meditating and I wanted to actually know why have I not reconnected with this person yet that I'm actually genuinely into. And the answer that I got was because they're not at the same frequency as you. Like my frequency is up here. This person's frequency is way down here. Now my intuition or higher self, whatever you want to call it when you're meditating, said you're just a very happy person. They said we just think of you as generally a happy person. You find the good in everything even if you're going through a shitty situation and this person unfortunately does not and they are going through some of their own things right now that have nothing to do with you. Now you do have to somewhat follow the spiritual community manifestation in order to understand what I'm saying. But again, this is why I always say dating is not black and white because it's just not. The other answer that I got was, Brie, you are a very intense person. You are so confident that it can be overwhelming for some people. Now, if you're like me, you know what kind of woman you are. You know exactly what it is you want. You have boundaries, but you can also flip out on a man if he's not showing up that way, or you can just ignore them, whichever. I've done both. That can be very intense for a man that doesn't know who he is, that's not, you know, hasn't figured out where he wants to go in life or who he is or who he wants to spend the rest of his life with, that can be really uncomfortable for some people. So again, I know that it could be so easy for your ego to say, oh, that person just was not interested in you. It's not always the reason. This is why I want you to get into meditation so you can ask your higher self these questions like I do instead of just chalking it up to one thing. This is a huge deal. That guy really was at a higher frequency and he found someone who was at the same level. It seems like these women think that spoiled, rotten milk is better than fresh milk. They are no longer good enough. They would be married with 10-year-old children if they were really at the high frequency they said they were. Also, having faith in people is being very demanding and spoiled. Let's go back to the milk example. Old milk is either on sale or being thrown away because it can make you sick. Not for more money than raw milk. It's likely that her higher self is a demon since she's always been a vixen. Do you think it would be worth it to wait for him to reach the same level as you or not? Should I forget about him or keep seeing him? Another problem with these career women is that they charge too much for dates, and the guy won't care if she moves up in her career. He's good for hotter women, so she forgot about him. So I know that this is going to sound crazy, but I feel like men have devalued being a wife and I don't aspire or feel like being a wife is a flex anymore. Like, I know that this is maybe going to get some women that are married upset or might feel some type of way, but on a weekly basis, I see, I mean, even on a daily basis, I see the way men treat their women and the things or their wives and the things that they do behind their backs, even when they're pregnant, makes me feel like, do I want to be in that position? Do I want to be the girl that gets played over and over again by their husband? Like, is being a wife even a flex anymore? No, you crazy person. It was never a flex. Also, when you talk about men, you can't say, is it a flex to be a wife anymore? It would have made sense if you said it. For men with flex to no longer have a wife, still not yes. Also, that was never a flex. Most of the time, every day how men treat their wives, and how many different men you meet every day. What do you want to say? The video that some men haters post on TikTok makes it look like that's what's happening. You should spend more time outside. 
Well, first date in Chicago and I got stood up. I still have not heard from this man. We were supposed to meet at 7 p.m. Dinner, he picked the place, he picked the time. We confirmed it yesterday. Still have not heard from him. I got there at 7.02 and I waited till 7.20. I didn't leave till 7.20. Just didn't show, just did not show up. <sighs> this was my first date of the year, y'all. Is this what Chicago dating is like? You're just not gonna show up? Did you get in a car accident? Are you dead? I was really excited to dip my toe back into the dating pool, but now I'm like, I'm done. This was a Michelin star restaurant. And when I walked in, I didn't hear from him. I was like, oh, I'm walking in, I'm here. <clears throat> no answer. I said his name at the receptionist. They're like, oh, we don't have anyone by that name. This is not a place you walk into. If you don't have a reservation, we're not getting a table. I should have known. I was really excited. Like I posted a video before this, like going on a date tonight. Oh, this is so embarrassing. Stood up, stood up. Chicago men, please do better. Now let me make this clear. She probably wanted the first date to be at a restaurant since she looks like one of those posh career women who thinks she's too good for regular restaurants. It's even a Michelin-starred restaurant. That means the restaurant can charge a lot for their food since they won that important award. That much money was spent on a date where he doesn't know the girl. Someone stupid would waste that much money on someone they don't know. A five-star restaurant is a nice treat for a 10th wedding anniversary and she doesn't understand why the other person has stopped talking to her. We'll just say this was the best of the best. Rich man who can easily waste a lot of money in one night. That man is going to kill the best woman he can find, or the person who bids the most. That is, the most moral and beautiful woman in the world. The one that doesn't expect him to act like an ATM. The very first time they meet to see if they click. This is part two of I dated women while I had a boyfriend. And before you come for me, my boyfriend knew about this. He was fully on board. I asked for an open relationship. He agreed. And then I had potentially one of the worst days of my entire life with a woman. And if you want to know about all of that, just go back and watch part one. No, I don't think I'm sick. But I did find those numbers somewhere. One more reason why men seem to be the problem. If you only want to listen. These are the rates of divorce. 42% are men and women. 72% of women and women. Men and men, 28%. What was it? Men and how bold they are. That does sound about right. I was ghosted and it sucked. I matched with this guy on Hinge. We hit it off and we had great conversation. We started texting. Lots of like shared interests. The conversation flowed well. He said many nice things that got me hooked. And basically I had to go home so I didn't get to meet up with him. I went home and we continued talking, which got me more invested. Stupid. And then we made plans to meet up when I got back. I told my parents about him, stupid. I told friends about him and I just was in it. I was in it, I was in it. I got back and he ghosted me. We never met up and this isn't a crazy ghosting story. It's about the fact that like being ghosted just sucks. It feels shitty and you never know what's going on in someone else's life. It could have been me, it could have not been me. However, I do believe it takes two minutes out of your day to send a text message. This actually happened a few months ago. I'm good now, but I wrote a song about it, and I think it's a fucking good song. It's called Ghost, and it's out now. She wrote a song about him like Taylor Swift does when she gets cheated on by another famous person, and she hadn't even met this guy. Another thing is that she left for a trip, and someone else got there before her. A thought wants to hang out with a guy every day in the afternoon. This is something that women do all the time. Because he needs to pay the bills, he's worked all day. So she moves on to the rich guy who retired young at 40 and now has all the time in the world. She also talks to a man who speaks Japanese well or knows about the red pill and knows what's going on. Women like to try out the men they meet on trips, especially when they go to a different country. And a woman who has been on trips before won't be impressed. She's been to that country before, so taking her on a trip there won't seem as exciting. She's going to compare your trip to hers or the trips other men have taken her on. And unless you're very, very rich, the experience won't impress or woo her. If your trips with her alone don't live up to her standards, she'll think you're not worth much and look for a better man. Guys, that's the end of today's video. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to like and follow our channel. We'll see you again in the next MGTOW video. Have a nice day and say goodbye until then.